master experiments here. So in the diagrams of many different um, higher quality polarized light microscopes, you will notice something known as a retardation plate, also known as a compensator. Retardation plates are optical elements that create a phase shift in the transmitted light, oftentimes with the help of bifringency crystalline quartz. However, any uniaxial bifringent crystal can be used to make a wave plate, and even some biaxial crystals with a very low level of biaxility, like muscovite mica, calcite in my rock and mineral collection. However, after looking at my samples of calcite, I realized that these aren't going to work. There are way too many other minerals combined with the calcite, and it's not clear, it's all cloudy. How am I supposed to make a wave plate out of these? Copper sulfate, salt, and sugar are all soluble in water, which makes it very easy to grow crystals from them. However, calcite, calcium carbonate, is non-soluble in water, and it crashes out of solution into a very fine powder microscopic crystals whenever you try to perform a chemical reaction to synthesize it, in my experience. If I want to create a um, wave plate for my microscope, I'm going to need a crystal at least the size of my pinky fingernail. After many failed attempts using my own methods, I did a lot of research. I asked around on Reddit, um, particularly I asked on the chemistry forum, and then I got somebody told me to go check on the crist r slash crystal growing forum, and somebody sent me a link to this. So apparently, this is the setup that was built. As you can see, uh, the um. Calcium ions pass through the gel at a much greater weight than the sulfate ions. The sulfate ions do penetrate the gel, however, not as greatly as the calcium ions do. Yeah, this is the most useful diagram. It's going to be a tube connecting a solution to another chemical solution. So I'm going to try to clean this out as good as I can because this is pretty dirty from being used in all of my electrolysis experiments and I do not want any contaminants really. I did manage to remove this nasty old diffusion membrane that can go in the trash and now this thing. I had to saw this off so it's a little bit shorter but it should still work. I'm going to clean it out a little bit more. So essentially this is going to be the setup. One side we are going to have uh, sodium carbonate washing soda. The other side we are going to have a solution of calcium acetate which is eggshells dissolved in vinegar and filtered so that they're not all cloudy and nasty. In between them we're going to use tampons to create a sodium polyacrylate barrier. We're going to um, use water to seal it up. You just take like a pad and to make the diffusion filter, you take a pad and you tear it apart to get at this center part. It's some cotton infused with sodium polyacrylates. Then you take another one and do the same. You roll them up. Alright, so this has been going for a little while. I'm going to dump out the water. Add two cotton balls. Stuff them down. It's fully been stuffed with uh, diffusion materials. I'm going to fill this thing completely with water to let the thing fully saturate. I also super glued this thing so that it's a little tighter. See our diffusion membrane is going to fully saturate with water. So this side is already saturating and you can see the gel already forming. So the gel is sodium polyacrylate water lock and it is going to act as our diffusion membrane for the experiment. Here, so what I'm doing here is I'm dissolving eggshells in vinegar, and I've got a balloon. It's been reacting for a little while. As you can see, it bubbles a lot, and all these little brown flaky stuff. We're gonna filter all of this out, but it's not done reacting yet. It's been 12 hours, but it takes a really long time for the reaction to finish. It can take up to two days for this reaction to finish. Also, if you have a balloon, you can put a balloon over the top to catch all of the f catch and recondense all of the vinegar fumes if you want the solution to be a little bit more concentrated, although it doesn't make much of a difference. Baking soda, put it on a toaster or oven safe um, sheet 
and dry it. And this converts it into carbon dioxide, water, and washing soda. This might look dirty, but it's actually not dirty. It's just really old and has seen a lot of wear and tear. And now I've got some baking soda. This should be enough and maybe even a little bit overkill, but we want a little bit overkill anyway. So this, now put it in the toaster oven to heat it up really hot. Here we go. A ton of info on how long you have to do this for, although 10 minutes to 20 minutes is a safe bet. I'm just gonna heat up some water and get some hot water to dissolve. This water right here is very hot. It's from my pure egg, so it's like coffee temperature. Now I'm gonna take some of this stuff and I'm gonna add this very hot powder to the water. It's already, it's very hot, so. And all of the washing soda I could dissolve into the mixture. The water's probably brown since it's from my coffee maker. There might have been some leftover like coffee or whatever. But it's still, it is still fairly pure and it will be purer when it's done filtering. There are a couple like little dots, maybe coffee beans or something in there. And I decided to filter it once with a weak filter. It's still got the weird color, but it's it's gonna be pure enough. It's not. I don't think it's gonna affect the calcite crystals significantly. If there's anything that could potentially put our calcite crystal purity in danger, it's probably gonna be these eggshells. They're supposedly 98% calcium carbonate, but I mean, look at them. I would like a small reserve of it for my chemical collection. When you're cooking it up, you would like to only fill the container halfway and during the first couple of hours when the reaction is the most vinegar vigorous, you have to take it off and shake it around to make sure that the eggshells float to the bottom again. But this is only during the first few hours when the reaction is most vigorous. To get the best yield, you have to allow the reaction to go on for at least one day, and then you start filtering it after one day because that's when the reaction is mostly finished. First indicator is that these um, eggshells stop floating to the top. I just started this reaction a couple hours ago and the eggshells keep floating to the top. But this one has been going on for a day and all of the eggshells sink because there's no more carbon dioxide pushing them to the top. You can also look on them and you see very few bubbles of carbon dioxide. And if you smell the solution, it barely smells like vinegar. There's just a very tiny hint of vinegar. You can barely smell it. In this one that I just started, I can smell the vinegar all the way from over here. Filtering it, I think we have enough calcium acetate filtrate to begin the experiment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take this container and I'm going to dump all the water out. Because this thing has been in there a couple days. There we go, the beginnings of something great. Calcium acetate, sodium carbonate, a bridge, sodium polyacrylate. The calcium ions are going to travel over, create... Calcium carbonate. Also, you might notice some weird stuff going on in here. And that was there before I put it in. I believe that the um, solution of sodium carbonate was super saturated because I made it when it was so freaking hot. And a lot of the stuff came out of solution. However, I don't care. I don't think it's going to interfere with the reaction. Now all there is to do really is just to wait for the reaction to finish. Which will take almost six weeks. So hope you enjoyed and see you in about six weeks and I will post other videos until then. I will try to post other videos weekly. I'm going to go back to my old routine of posting one video every week. And the reason I'm not going to post videos as much as possible anymore is because I'm running low on videos. And second off, my teachers are giving me a ton of homeschool stuff and it's so difficult to keep track of all the stuff from homeschool. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and see you in the future video. Next week, I think it's going to be the bacteria one.